Hi everyone and welcome back to the ITIF interview series where we interview stakeholders in the aquaculture community to find out what's going on in the sector. So today we are joined by Andrew Bett, who is the Managing Director and CEO of Salar Pursuits. And today he's here to talk to us about the smelt screen, which is the latest innovation in the battle against sea life. So Andrew, thank you very much for joining us today. Morning, Sarah. The pleasure to meet you and thank you for inviting me to come on. No, it's great to have you here. So I'm going to jump in straight away. I want to hear more about this. So if you, can you tell us anything about Smalt Screen um, and actually about the company as well and how you're getting on with it? Yeah, so um, we're a small uh, family owned SME. Uh, we're, we're now involved uh, in R&D, um, formerly in the paper and packaging industry and now uh, into the aquaculture industry where there we, see, uh, yeah, where we see great, great <laughs> opportunities to see where research development and innovation can solve some of these problems if we possibly can. Um, our, our approach to it is uh, with the background of, uh, of um, uh, some successful innovations in PLC companies before, um, which have been brought to commercial success, um, uh, combined with a long passion for salmon, uh, wild salmon and now farmed salmon, um, a deep knowledge of uh, fish physiology, which has involved some of my zoolo zoology uh, studies uh, at university, um, knowledge of uh, phytoplankton, copepods, uh, aquatic insects, and all of this combines with uh, some ideas that we had to solve the problem of sea lice on some farms. So we have, um, we've had experience in the past with filtration, and uh, yeah, so I've, I've, I've been involved in various mediums uh, in the past uh, that can filter very uh, you know, tiny, tiny particles of like dust out of, out of um, hydraulic oils. And so it, it, is, it seemed yeah. to be uh, possible to solve this problem. And so we've developed a, um, a fine woven nylon mesh solution. Uh, it, it's high tensile strength, which is what you get from woven materials. Um, in panels that can be sewn uh, to any shape or size. And the beauty of it is that it retrofits inside an, a, a, an existing uh, salmon cage. So anywhere where there's a problem with, uh, with um, uh, mm -hmm. this appalling parasite, you know, which is, which is a desperate problem for salmon farmers uh, all over the world where, where Atlantic salmon are, are farmed, um, we've, we've proven now at, um, at lab level um, prototype level that uh, we can sustain um, a, a 15 kilo cubic meter um, stocking density, which is pretty standard for, for, yeah. for farmers, maintain good oxygen exchange between 90 and 100% uh, dissolved oxygen and 100% exclusion of sea lice. So this is now quite an exciting product, yeah. Yeah, and it seems like it, so it'll fit back into existing gear seamlessly then, like, no, no trouble at all. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. there are there are various. Um, uh, we've spoken with salmon farmers who who mm -hmm. see potential for it, particularly with um, the most vulnerable stage, which is post post smolt. Um, they yeah. straight out from the hatchery into the sea, and if you can get mm -hmm. them out of the hatchery as early as possible, um, you know, this is also, um, as I understand it, ideal for the salmon. Uh, and then they can go into a small screen enclosure mm -hmm. uh, and be 100% be protected from through their really most vulnerable stages um, taken from 100 grams through to a kilo. Yeah, because I, I mean, think they, they can go right through, right through to, to half, but that's yet to be tested, you know. Yeah, you're <laughs> working on it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So I think for the, the sea lice with the small, like they're, they're so vulnerable at that stage. Yeah, and and tell me, so this I think this is really of great interest to Irish aquaculture producers. It's really going to be, I think, a game changer in the industry for them. Well, we 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 feel so. We hope so. Yeah. Um, it, we're, you know, we're, we're getting good feedback already. Um, great. Yeah. We we know that it's got to be it's got to be um, you know fully proven at sea. You know this this means. Um, all of the different pieces in the puzzle that are part of our growing team who will be behind this project and this means uh, other ancillary suppliers so uh, this is obviously it's a fine mesh it's a it's a it's a, you know that let's say we can we can maintain a good oxygen uh, dissolved oxygen but you know in warmer conditions different things can happen 
Uh, if the fish get stressed for whatever reason, they use more oxygen. You know, we have to bear that all in mind. So we we've 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 projected to include at least two um, 50 horsepower pumps, which will bring right. water up from from like 20 meters below cold, clean water. They'll mm -hmm. go through um, a, a, a two series uh, um, HDP coated um, filters down to like 120 micron or something like that. But that'll clear that'll keep keep out all all uh, you know any sea lice that's at, at, at any at depth and, and uh, you know, yeah. the problem with sea lice is that they they do go very deep um, especially during the day so um, that element of it is um, is also covered off and in fact we would be working with another Irish company called called EPS yeah they they yeah. bought area pumps I think I mentioned uh, yeah yeah so, um, we've been yeah those sort of things are covered off. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, there's obviously the nets need to be cleaned. Uh, so we'd be working with a, a actually a New Zealand company, but there's also another company in Aberdeen who who are very interested in providing the technology to to clean both clean the the the, the nets. They have to be kept clean. So that's regular cleaning. You know, that could be two two times a week even. Um, yeah. And the waste has to be collected out of the out of the bottom of the enclosure, so no waste will be um, emitted into the into the environment. That has to be collected. Yeah, so that has to be collected. There, are, there's technology already out there that will mm -hmm. do that um, through through compressed air pumps. Yeah, and, and then that yeah. then that gets converted to biofuel. So it's it's generally speaking a uh, a solution we think that well possibly even global industry but for, for mm. Ireland I'm understanding that you know licenses are very hard to come by it's particularly mm. you know um, environmental impact and sea lice problems and if those two problems are solved uh, our feeling is that that mm. sort of coastal or inshore farming of salmon is still the most efficient uh, most cost effective and and actually you know, it's the safest. You know, if you've got people involved, you don't want them a long way offshore. But this would be our our our, our thinking. You know. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're, yeah, you're kind of tackling some of the the big problems there in terms of the environmental impact and everything as well. So it's fantastic. And th so this is a relatively new um, device you've come up with. So and where are you in the development stage? Yeah, so we started developing it four years ago. Um, yeah. There are two two patents pending. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the intellectual property is also insured. Um, we've taken it to TRL six, right, so yeah. we're at TRL six, which is basically um, ready now to launch um, uh, into a, a, a marine site. And thankfully, although there isn't one in Scotland, you know, Good Ireland has produced a fantastic opportunity. The Marine Institute uh, in Cashel Bay in Connemara, where yeah. we are booked in uh, for a 50 meter um, enclosure. Um, circumference enclosure, so that's around sort of eight meter de depth, and a second enclosure will be using four sentinel um, enclosures. These are four meter by four meter by like two and a half, two like two meter depth. So th these will be like controls, so yeah. that we can prove that our system is keeping the sea lice out, and 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 the waste will be collected. The pumps mm -hmm. will work, will keep the fish healthy. Um, and we, we will have lots of controls going on with maybe you know, cleaner fish or alternative systems that are used currently and, and to see how they compare, you know. Yeah, so this I, this will be hopefully for the industry, for for for, for the big players, all players <laughs> to come and see. Yeah, how, <laughs> hopefully everybody. You know how it goes. So yeah. that, that, that's kind of the the more immediate plans is to take it from TRL yeah. six to TRL nine commercial mm -hmm. by around autumn next year. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. And actually, that was kind of leading on to my next question is like, how does it compare to other solutions on the market? Like you seem to be doing so much with it. Well, there's a lot of potential with it and it's not just sea lice. We, we're, we've got our we've got our heads around when you're dealing with filtration, you, we've got our heads around problems with hydrozoa, these micro jellyfish, which cause cause of they recently believe that they can be some of the cause of uh, amoebic gill disease. Well, hydro, the, our, our, our mesh will keep uh, these hydrozoa out as well. So we will protect the, the salmon from from micro jellyfish. Yeah. Um, and we're working with another company on on how to deal with algal blooms as well. So um, oh, yeah. the, the whole package is there. Now, um, the alternative systems there, of course, um, just don't do 100% of the job. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you know, the, these these enormous sort of thermal delicing uh, systems. Yeah, I think they're very stressful for the salmon. Um, as I understand it, unfortunately, the sea lice on the salmon, they just they release their their um, larvae. Um, as they as the salmon gets stressed, the, the, the lice on them release the larvae straight into the river, uh, into the um, pen. Yeah. And the salmon go through a cleaning system and they get dumped back into the mm. pen and um, they get infected again almost immediately. So within two weeks, yeah. you, they can be infected again. And then eight weeks later, they've got adult female sea lice. They're ready to go. Sometimes in mm. warmer conditions, it's like within six weeks. So, I mean, there just isn't the capacity to get around all the pens and clean them every, uh, you know, de-lice them every two, yeah. every five, six weeks. And then the cleaner fish story, I think, I, I don't know enough about it, but mm. my impression is that uh, they're not 100% reliable. Some cleaner fish are good at it and others aren't good at it. I, one salmon farmer was telling me I spend more time looking after my cleaner fish <laughs> than else? my salmon because he said if yeah. they're grazing, if I don't keep my nets clean, they graze on the algae in the net and then they don't eat the lice. And also yeah. one has to concede that the lice only become interesting for them to feed on after after eight weeks or six weeks, you know, when they're full sized sea lice. I mean, actually yeah. that poor salmon has been infected six weeks earlier, you know, yeah, so I, yeah. you know what I mean? We don't know mm -hmm. whether that's impacting on its health, on its feeding, um, you know, it's just, it basically, mm -hmm. if you can keep them out of the enclosure, that's yeah. the best, yeah. I know you're kind of cutting the problem off at the head really before it gets to take. Yeah, I'd say basically you, yeah. you, remove, yeah. you remove the teenager from 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 the life cycle and there's no further problems, right? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And I guess, I mean, anything to cut down on work, you know, if you're trying to clean all these pens and anything to just reduce stress for the, the fish as well is. is yeah, so I mean, of, of course, you, of course, it's not going to be interesting for the salmon farming industry if, if, if it's much more expensive or if, you know, that of course, um, you know, they managed to get a lot of salmon to market, very good quality salmon to market um, with existing systems. But uh, mm -hmm. we've costed our our uh, small screen. I mean, believe me, yeah. woven nylon mesh is, is not expensive. Uh, there aren't a lot of producers in the world, um, mm -hmm. but we've costed it and we think we can reduce um, uh, salmon production costs by Euro 20 cents a kilo with Wait. our system. Yeah. And it's, it's a big saving, like it's not not insignificant. A big saving. We, yeah, we, no, really we wouldn't is. expect we wouldn't we wouldn't have taken it this far. We wouldn't expect the industry to be interested in it if it didn't also uh, provide a saving for them, right? Yeah, so. I know it's delivering there as well, which is which is really interesting. And I think my kind of next question for you, and I think you've answered in one sense, is what what's the next step for your research? But you're setting up in Cork soon. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, it, yeah, Connemara, that's the next thing. Right. Um, yeah, sorry, Connemara. But I mean, but you're right. No, I I, I did mention Cork and that's EPS. <laughs> EPS, <laughs> uh, quite right. Yeah, yeah I, sorry, I talked too, too loud. Yeah, anyway. Um, There's so much going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> going on. We, we are excited about it. I mean, yeah. Yeah, why wouldn't we be? You know, we're, yeah. we're, we're principally driven by a desire to improve fish health, reduce mm -hmm. mortality, uh, reduce environmental impact, uh, provide rural employment, uh, you know, deliver to the industry opportunities for them to, to get new licenses. It's a, it's a fantastic place to produce protein. So we think we think that this this is exciting and, and um, um, you know, we, we've got we've got, of course, we've got to land some a bit more funding uh, yeah. to, to cover the costs of of uh, of this Connemara uh, mm -hmm. sea trial. Um, we, we're also very excited if any um, farming companies, any any salmon farming company wants to come to us and say, oh, well, we've got a, a spare 80, 80 meter circumference cage sitting somewhere, I don't know, like Bantry Bay or uh, anywhere further north or on the west coast of Scotland, you know, please contact us. We, we, can, we can produce uh, we can manufacture at SNG Killybegs. We can uh, we can manufacture uh, um, an enclosure to fit any size. Right, we're ready that's to go. Awesome. Yeah, and actually, and that's probably the most important question I have for you now is where can people find out more? Yeah, so we're we're <laughs> we're, we're, we're actually this is the first time we've told the industry about what we've been doing. 
yeah. uh, for very private conversations, very often under uh, under uh, non disclosure agreements and things like that. So this is the first yeah. time we're opening, and that's because our our patent is published. Um, mm -hmm. our, our patent application is pu published, um, to, uh, and we and we will have our the, all the material and the work we've been doing published on a website. Uh, mm -hmm. Should be by the end of next week, ready ready to, to find yeah. us. So uh, right the press right read. at the middle of uh, middle of um, uh, towards the end of November, let's say. Yeah, should yeah. be good. Perfect. That's great because I know we'll get get everyone on to you now. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, no, it's we're fantastic. Ready, we're ready to support, help. Yeah. Uh, develop uh, and get feedback because a, we're not an aquaculture company. We 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 we're, we know now a lot, but yeah. Yeah. I'm not a salmon farmer, right? So uh, mm -hmm. I'm ready to learn as well. We yeah, all are. Okay. <laughs> That's fantastic. And what we can do is we'll put up um, those website details when you're ready, then, and your own contact details on the ITIP website please, as well. Please, of course, yes, absolutely. My email address and 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 telephone contact details, of course. Yeah. And okay. and, and I'm on uh, <clears throat> and I'm on LinkedIn. Oh, LinkedIn. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So we'll get all those details up. Um, and then, Andrew, I just want to say thank you very much for talking to us this morning. It was really interesting to find out more about the smoke screen and, and again, the evolution of it over the last few years as well. It's it's really exciting innovation and a really exciting time for the company as well. Thank you for inviting us to come on. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much.